Real people. Real opinions. Real talk radio. The multi-award winning Niall Boylan Show. Classic Hits. Jared Hutch, known as The Monk, or Jerry Hutch, has been arrested in Spain on foot of a European arrest warrant. The 58-year-old is currently in, a Spanish, in Spanish custody. It is believed that he was detained in Fingarola uh, on the Costa del Sol, and Gardi believe he had been moving between Spain, where he has a home, and other European countries. His extradition was sought by the Garda team in Badimon, which has been investigating the murder of David Byrne at the Regency Hotel back in February 2016. And the 34-year-old Kinahan organised crime group member was shot dead at a boxing weigh-in uh, by a gang of armed men dressed as Gardy. One was actually dressed as a woman, if you remember that uh, particular story at the time. And back in July, Gardy served book of evidence on four men, including a former Sinn Féin councillor, who are charged in connection with the murder. A file on the case was submitted to the Director of Public Prosecutions, uh, who then applied to the High Court for a European arrest warrant for Jerry Hutch. Uh, Irish independent journalist Paul Williams joins me on the line uh, to give me a little bit more about it. Crime journalist and author of the book On the Monk uh, that was published last year. Paul, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Niall. Good to talk to you. Uh, now, Paul, well, first of all, Jerry Hutch, right? I mean, the only thing really most of us know about Jerry Hutch is what <clears> we <throat> saw in the Veronica Guerin movie. And he was romanticised as this ordinary, decent criminal or this nice guy of criminality. I mean, what is Jerry Hutch like or who is he? Well, as I, in the book, the strap line of the book was the monk, the life crimes of our most enigmatic gang boss. And I've been chronicling his life story since the 80s. And he, the word enigmatic is the, is, is the one that always took out of my mind about him. He was certainly, uh, you know, a, a rarity in gangland. He's certainly an, a, a very much a an unprecedented character in many ways. Uh, he did... And this doesn't glorify him anyway. And you'd have you have to understand the sort of the concept of organised crime and, and how it operates. And the, uh, I say this that he was considered to be the last of a so-called breed called ordinary people, as in guys who did not go around butchering people. Uh, yes, he was nothing, uh, nothing it, along it, the it, lines it, of the general or any of those individuals. Uh, yeah, he, he, didn't, he didn't go looking for trouble. He didn't go trying to create problems. He didn't. He carried out big arm robberies. He stayed away from the drug trade largely, although in the background he was an investor in, in various deals and stuff like that. But he stayed out of all of that. He didn't go around looking for trouble. He didn't throw his way around. He was he was always a very pragmatic, strategic. Uh, kind of character. He lived a very clean life, kept himself fit, didn't smoke, uh, was was uh, uh, didn't drink very much uh, until recent years. He ran and helped finance a, a boxing club, the Corinthians, in the North Inner City, which was a you know a great assistance to the community, trying to keep kids away from trouble. And in fact, it's very difficult for you to find anyone in the North Inner City in his old, his old neighborhood, the Hutch neighborhood, to say a bad word about him. Yeah. Uh, having, having said all of that. He is, at the moment, incarcerated in a cell in Spain, uh, awaiting extradition to face charges connected to one of the most outrageous and audacious uh, acts of narco-terrorism we have ever seen in this country. Uh, and the pictures of that are etched in everybody's mind. Well, the videos, of course, we've all seen the videos as well. I mean, these are the and, videos and, and, where the Gardaí, well, we thought it was Gardaí, yeah, yeah. and, and a woman, who we thought was a woman, of course, a man with a wig on, went in mm-hmm. and opened fire on members of the public. With AK-47s. But in fact, yeah. even within that, it showed a degree of... That's, it was what you call a spectacular in terrorism terms. But it was also exceptionally well organized, and I'll tell you how and why, and this is in absolutely no way to in any way justify it, but in terms of the, the, the discipline shown by those killers that went into that hotel that day, uh, they picked out one member of the Kinnan cartel. They didn't actually open fire uh, indiscriminately on the, on the audience. It didn't hit any innocent people. Which you know, it's, they won't be swear uh, calling using that in mitigation when they're going down uh, if they're convicted in the special criminal court uh, down the road. But it did illustrate a degree of very fo- how it focused and disciplined it was, which is very much the characteristics of everything Hutch did in his life. Now, it was a spectacular miscalculation. It was one of the biggest. It was the biggest mistake this man has ever made in his life. He had retired from criminality, and now that's he right. He was driving a taxi, of course. Position. Well, he was. Well, he, he was he, doing he, Debs. Yeah, well, he had done that years ago. Yeah. he quit all that. He was. Oh, he had finished that. Had he, yeah, 
Yeah, he was living in Spain, living the high, a good life, a quiet life, and keeping his head down because he's loads of money. He's invested it very, very well at the top of Well, I mean, uh, that's, well, that's the right. thing, Paul. I mean, was he wealthy at that stage? Now, I know he paid the revenue a large sum of money at one stage. Then he paid Cab 1.2 million. That's right. Years ago, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And then, and then he, he ended up in court um, because he was being denied a taxi license. And I remember the yeah. story at the time I was working on another radio mm-hmm. station. It was on the news at the time that the court had ruled in his favour. They couldn't deny him a right to earn a living. Mm-hmm. Um, so he got his taxi license. And then he, he bought the big, um, you know, the, one of those big limos. The big stretch limo. Yeah, the stretch limo yeah. for doing the Debs. Um, so he seemed to be, you know, going down the road of being, you know, you, the, the guy and hanging up the, the I suppose, you know, the, the life of crime and, and moving on with his life. But did he have much money at that stage? Oh, he's he, he, very wealthy man, yeah, because he invested very cleverly. Like, you know, the reality was with the cab in, in those days, the strategies, their strategy was that, you know, you get money out of these guys. You don't completely and absolutely impoverish them. They always have a few bob left somewhere. Um, he had a lot of property interests right across, uh, you know, in Europe, he had a lot of property, a lot of property here in the UK. So he's quite a wealthy dude. He made a lot of money. Remember, they, they, he robbed something that could have been 13 million euros in mm-hmm. today's money. Uh, apart from, I think it was 300 or 400,000 pounds of that seized. Back well, of course, he, he would deny that, that by the way, can I point out, you know, he would mm-hmm. deny, he would deny that. Oh, he was always denied it, yeah. yeah. Like, I think we've gone well past that with Jerry and Jerry knows by himself. And I have talked to him. I, did, I, I have he's, heard some very funny interviews with him, by the way, because he's a very clever yeah. man at words. He's uh, very clever, but that makes but you think as well, though. And I, but I, I'm perplexed by it because I do think I, I understand his psychology, and I've I've been on his in his shadow and on his shoulder for over thirty years. Did now. you ever talk to but him? But I find this. I find oh, I did regular several times. Yeah, but I, I find it astonishing that a man of his intelligence and supposed ability to disappear, he disappeared in April when it came out that the European arrest warrant had been issued here for his, to bring him back on, to extradite him back here for to face the charge of murdering Gabe Byrne. Um, you know, the fact that he was found in Fungarola, it's a bit like you going to ground and still hanging around uh, the 4FM <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. And, and like he, he's well and well and truly caught. Is I mean, is the is the net, Paul, closing in on all of this organised crime? Of course, that particular incident in the Regency Hotel was the start of many murders because, of course, you had the whole family feud between uh, Hutch and Kinahan. So, I mean, is the net closing in on them all now? Well, the, the, the net is closing in on these guys. The net is not closing in on organised crime. This particular, these are the most prominent briars or nettles that have grown up in your garden. And what we're doing in the process at, at the moment is cutting them down. Uh, he, he, the problem with organised crime is that's what it is at the moment. You, you cut the weeds down, but you never get to the roots of them. And they will continue to grow at a, at a ferocious rate, as we can see. The country's flooded with drugs. and the, A lot of people uh, pop uh, prospering from it. But these guys, this war, what happened between these two tribes, let's just re- re- remind your listeners, 2015, uh, Gary Hutch, Jer- Jerry's nephew, is shot dead by, on the orders of Daniel Kennan in Spain. But that was Kennan reneging on a deal. He did a face-to-face deal with Jared Hutch in 2014 to save the life of Gary Hutch because Gary Hutch was part of an integral part of Kennan's organisation but fell out with him, pulled a stroke, got a guy to go along and shoot Daniel Kennan, shot an innocent man instead, then they put out a contract on him, he's dead. But the point is that he was part of what's called gangland royalty. These guys live in a different world to us. I'm not accrediting them as, uh, that, that, that this is normal. I think that this is the way they think and the way they carry on. He was gangland royalty because he was a hutch. So therefore, they had to negotiate. Otherwise, they would have just whacked him straight away. So they did a deal, and the deal was the compensation was paid. That Gary Hutch keeps his head down and keep his mind, stay well away from them. Um, but they didn't let him off the hook, and a year later, they reneged on the deed, killed him. The most significant thing after that, the most shocking thing, that the, the big shock I've had since Veronica Guerin was murdered, uh, was when uh, on, on New Year's Eve we got word that uh, two hitmen had been dispatched from Dublin to shoot dead uh, Jerry Hutch in a bar in Lanzarote on the orders of Daniel Kinham. That was... Unprecedented. That was unprecedented. But everybody was writing about that at the time here, saying this is the start of something big. And everybody who knew Hutch would know that something else was going to happen. And then we saw it in the Regency, that meticulously planned but outrageous act 
of narco-terrorism, which then, as you said, unleashed unmerciful uh, bloodshed and savagery on the streets of Dublin. But I think the proper figure is 50, 14 of the 15 subsequent deaths after the murder of David Byrne in the, in the two years were carried out by the Kinnans who went to basically carry, wipe out the Hutches. And in that process, Jerry Hutch's brother, Eddie, was shot dead, who Eddie was his closest sibling and was his mentor growing up. Uh, his three are dead and two of his best friends were also uh, assassinated. So, uh, and he left the country very quickly after that. As I said, it was a misca- spectacular miscalculation. But he's been on the run now since 2016. He's been keeping his head down very, very well. Um, he had been moving around, but then when the hint of this, this file, there was a file sent by the Guardian Ballymun to the DPP late last year, recommending the Hutch be charged with murder and other offences, which are probably like uh, conspiracy to murder, attempted murder, possession of firearms, stuff like that, leading a criminal gang. Um, when the decision came back from the DPP earlier this year, say February, March, I think the Spanish started watching them uh, and getting ready for the time that they'd lift them. Uh, but he got tipped off some stage in the beginning of April and he disappeared and also at the same time they started tweeting about aspects of the, the criminal investigation into the Regency and attacking and why, why do you think well, Paul, Paul, okay Paul why do you think he stayed there I mean a man as you say who has plenty of money no, no shortage of money he could probably re- relocate to any country where they didn't have the ability to extradite him why do you think he stayed there I, I really don't know. It doesn't. It, it, it makes absolutely no sense at all, uh, uh, unless he had just arrived back. Recently. Because where, where is Kinahan at the moment? Where, whereabouts is Daniel Kinahan? But, but he is in Dubai. You know? Dubai, yeah, yeah, okay. He, he's, in he's still there, okay. Desert. He's still in Dubai. And he okay. can't really leave there. In fact, he will be very nervous as a result of this, because just like Hutch, the once, uh, I've been saying to people all day, you know, the wheels of justice grind uh, dreadfully slowly, but they do, once they start grinding, they do not stop. And it is relentless. The same thing is going to happen to Kinnahan. Mark my word. Um, if I never predicted anything else, Kinnahan will be back here, I would say, in the next few years. Mm-hmm. Because there's huge efforts made to get to take it back. And the, big, the, the net point about this is, is, is at, the, at, the, at, at the end of the day, is this. You know, the two crews went to war with each other. But what they do whenever they go to war was they inflict absolute terror on the ordinary society and they threaten the legitimacy of the state and they threaten to undermine the rule of law because these guys decided they want to start killing each other. But they did 